Bill, welcome. Welcome Thank back you. to SIS. Uh, Thank thanks so much for coming and uh, look forward to walking back into our, our beautiful building. The students uh, uh, in our programs are uh, using the work that, that you've produced and uh, would love for you to, to give our students a sense of uh, thinking about cradle to cradle and then uh, the upcycle. Cradle to cradle looks at the idea that waste equals food. Everything is food. And that we use renewable power, clean energy, and we celebrate diversity. So um, that, those are the fundamental principles mm -hmm. of cradle to cradle. And, and then the upcycle is about building on that, that uses cradle to cradle as the fulcrum against which we put levers. And, Archimedes has famously said, give me uh, a lever, a fulcrum, and a place to stand, and I can move the earth. And, and cradle to cradle is a fulcrum. It's a, it's a rock that doesn't move. And then the upcycle is all about leverage and how you can approach the world using this positive attitude. When did you first say to yourself, I'm gonna, this is what I'm going to do for a living? I'm gonna, I'm gonna... I've been asked that a lot. I think that a lot of people don't realize I was born in Japan after the Second World War. And um, I remember lying as a baby, three years old, on a futon, staring at a wooden ceiling put together with Japanese joinery. And I remember thinking that if somebody pulled that pin out of that scarf joint, the whole thing could come down. And I'm lying there at three going, uh-oh. Well, the wonderful thing for me when we first interviewed here was we talked about it, the idea of beauty and abundance. And the people who were here had a beautiful attitude and an abundance of goodwill. And were excited about building a community around the ideas and that the building would be uh, evidence of their collaboration. And so the notion of goodwill and the hope for a positive future around the world was embodied in the building and the design itself. This school was founded in 1957 through a call from President Dwight Eisenhower uh, for some school out there, and American University took up the challenge, to be founded in order to wage peace. So this idea of waging peace is really a critical activity, and there's fierceness in it. There's, there's deliberate gentleness with fierceness. And so the idea of a building that is gentle, like this mm -hmm. building is a very gentle building. Mm -hmm. um, it's, it's a place to convene, it's a place to talk. It's a building that wages peace with the world. It's, it's here to make the world better, not worse, and certainly not just less bad either. It's actually trying to be more good. How much was considered uh, when the building was put up, the kind of landscaping that needed to, to surround it in order to help uh, generate the concept? I think the most important part of the landscaping idea uh, had to do with the larger context of being, you know, right here at the center of the institution, you know, on this great lawn and the quad here uh, as a siting strategy. Mm -hmm. So this, the landscape actually is inside the building. When you look at the space behind us, it is an extension of the space of the outdoors. So the fact that the outdoor space becomes indoor space mm -hmm. as all one space, I think is really the key landscape element. The other elements that happened were the cherry trees that were part of a historic story of waging peace here with Korea right. and so on. Very important as a metaphor and for storytelling. And then finally, the building the site and our surroundings were all studied for their um, ability to attract and, and retain other species that are in endemic to this place. And how had previous projects that you worked on informed the work that you did for this project? One of the direct things was having lived on the lawn at the University of Virginia, designed by Thomas Jefferson, it was clear that the idea of a building on an academic lawn could become pedagogy. So Jefferson had the rotunda, which was a library, which really represented Plato and pure form and truth and beauty. And then the 10 pavilions on colonnades, which was Aristotle and rational thinking. And the combination of beauty 
and rational thinking combined with the search for truth um, really was what we saw here at the school happening. And so the, the notion of building a building that evidenced that mission uh, was, a, was a precedent that I had the privilege of understanding. When you design a building like this, there's you know, the, the design features. Uh, and there's certain things that you're trying to convey through the features. Uh, and there are also other elements to it, such as the solar panels on the roof. How do you think about the kinds of materials that are going to be used in a building like this in making this contribution towards sustainability? This is sustainably forested maple. So when you look at that wood, there's a story behind it, which has to do with a forest that is still thriving while we celebrate the wood from that forest, this handrail, those panels over there. So there are hidden stories behind all these things. And think about what Francis Crick said about what it means to be alive. It means we have growth, we have free energy from outside the system, in the case of solar energy for the planet. And then we have an open system of chemicals operating for the benefit of the organisms and their reproduction. Well, that's what this building is about. The the celebration of life and growth of our students and our young people, the fact that we use solar energy, we have um, solar collectors all over the roof, we have uh, our hot water is produced by solar energy and so on. We have our water collected from the rain and used uh, internally in different cycles and so on. All the additional ideas around social fairness, uh, sourcing, ethical sourcing of all materials. If you have a, a school of this kind, we could ask diplomats around the world to watch what happened when bamboo was harvested. We could have people see the quarries where the, where the aggregate came from. We actually, you know, used the opportunity to be self-similar to the mission of the school itself. Well, thanks again for coming. It's always great to have you back at the School of International Service. My pleasure. And uh, so what's, what's the next big thing on your agenda? The next big thing for me is the World Economic Forum, new Meta Council on the Circular Economy. And I've been asked to be the chairman. So we'll have access to the biggest companies in the world and governments to talk about the same issues we've developed here. So that's very exciting to me. And then I'm doing new factories in India and that make water on the roofs and grow food. And then a new city project in China is just getting ready to start. That's great.